This is a brief tutorial on how to use the pen tool and its associated uh, tools that are available to you in here to create a simple section using the paths around any object that you may wish to. So let me explain first what the tools are about. Now, to create a simple path, just the moment I choose the pen tool, um, my options uh, change over here and there's path, shape, so I am basically working in a path. And then it says selection, mask, shape, so uh, that will become accurately. So to create a path, let's say I click here and this little node that comes up, um, I can move to the next point any randomly and click and now you'll start to see a line which tells this is the area that I am now creating a selection on. So I can you like this all the way around and these are just straight lines and straight paths nothing whatever. Uh, the important thing to remember is that you must bring your tool to the point of origin where it started. And notice the moment I place my curve on the very first node that I had created, there's a little circle that appears right next to it, which implies that now I will have a closed path. So this is one way of the shape. Now, if you wish to then move it around, then you have the patch and tool, which is this black arrow directly beneath the pen tool, or there's the direction tool which is uh, the second arrow that is directly beneath the path selection tool. So if you took the direct sele selection and you click anywhere on the path, you have to click on the path. I click everywhere, nothing will happen. But if I click directly on the path, notice the nodes active or become available. Now I can pick any particular node and move it around, create a particular shape. By the same token, if I were to have taken the path selection tool, again I can only and only click with path region or on the path and notice all the nodes are now highlighted so I can move it around if I so wish to. I'm gonna get rid of this for a moment and show you how to create now a curved path. So I'll still take the pen tool and uh, let's say I wish to make some curved form. So if I click and drag, notice these hangers come along. So I clicked and drag. What it's telling me is that now going to have a curved space. So I come to the next one and I click and drag. Notice how the curve is happening. At the same time, you can continue to click a straight and notice here there is no hanger whatsoever and I could continue with another sign and then decide that, hey, I need to have a curve path once again. I create a curve path and then I can end the path and close the path. So this shape that I've created. By the same token, now if I wish to modify it, I can obviously go back in the direct selection tool, click anywhere and move the nodes around. This was supposedly a straight line, so this is the only curve that I have. Now, when I use the direct selection tool and I move the hangers around, it impacts the curved surfaces on both sides. If I wish it to do that, notice again, as I do it, it changes its form. It completely impacts the other side as well. So let's say that I want the other side to be impacted. So there's something called right directly within the pen tool options there's a convert point tool which is a great tool and I don't have to go back to the direct selection tool because notice if I click where on the path it allows me to actually by default it appears like a direct selection tool and now if I bring it directly onto the nodes fingers on the node I can now manipulate and just impact that particular side of the curve and if you wish now select another node uh, the smart thing to do would be that you press the 
Command key on a Mac and click on the node. I want to make this into a curve point as well. So while this is here, I can click and drag and then once again I have created a curve Bezier in here and I can modify it to my heart's content. I come here and I see it's just this. I wish to create a curve on this side. So I'll click and I'll drag and I have now created a curved surface yet once. If you wish to eliminate the curved surface and make it into a straight line, click bring the convert point tool onto a node that you wish to convert it into a straight point. Click and it converts back into or into a straight line. Let's say I wanted this to be a straight line. I will simply click in here. And if I wanted this to be a straight line, I can click in here. Or if I wanted to re initiate a surface, then I can click and drag in there. So this is how you create curved surfaces. Now that you have some understanding of the behavior of the pen tool, uh, let's actually get into the real assignment. This was the assignment where you're supposed to create a selection around the bar to eliminate this existing background and then introduce a background that you create and then create a shadow. So to begin with, I will first start with the pen tool. So I take the pen tool, I will enlarge the image so that I can see what I'm doing and I can follow the contours object that I'm going to be drawing a path around. So I'll pick on any one point and I click in here and then I click and drag a little bit because the shape is not the most this edges are not the smoothest edges. There's a little bit sticking out. I'm going to eliminate that. So I'm going to cut into it. And then around the corners, I'm creating additional curves. And then I scroll through. And I'll continue on as I see the form and shape. You can make your choice on whether you wish to have a curved path or a straight line path. So I'm sort of working with a mixture. And we will go back and clean it up and edit it. While I'm doing this, I realize that the fewer the paths, the easier it is. If you create too many, the fewer the nodes, uh, the easier it becomes. If you add too many nodes, managing the nodes makes it complex. And besides that, the file size also increases. So I am working in here and I'm nearly back to my point where I had started. So, and I close the path. Now, notice the layers palette. So my layer doesn't show anything. There's a tab right in the layers path, pal um, tab, paths. If I click in here, it says a work path. Notice the work path text is italicized. Um, we need to save this path. Uh, this path will disappear as soon as we are finished working and we save the file. So double click in here and give it a name. So I'm just going to name it as the box. So notice now not italicized. Once I have done that, I am simply going to go into my convert tool, click somewhere on the path, enlarge it a wee bit more to see where my path needs some modifications and some adjustments. So I bring it in here. I'm going to actually trim this out so that the box looks a little smoother and fix a little bit of this curve. And I'm OK here. Uh, perhaps a little bit of an adjustment here. And then maybe the tiny bits in here. I'm just trying to follow the contour edge, edges as closely as I can. And I continue on and I'll basically go all the way around to ensure that I am not missing out or I'm not being sloppy. One needs to be as clean as possible because one of the purposes of using the panel and creating a path is to have a very, very clean selection. So fundamentally, at this point in time, I have created a reasonable selection. Now, while you notice this, if I click out, it grays out and I click on it, now my path is active. Now I can create a selection here. 
So I go into my flyout menu and I say make selection. <coughs> Photographs consist of pixels. So if you were to have no feathering, it'll become a very sharp, crisp edge. So ideally, I'm going to add, let's say, a two pixel feathering on it so the edges appear nice. And so now, notice that I have a nice marquee around. If I now go back into my layers palette, now I have an option. What will Bentley, the fact that the marquee is not outside, but it's enclosing the box space, I can now choose. If I were to hit delete, I'll end up deleting my box. Or if I were to apply a mask, notice what happens. The background becomes. Uh, the reason why you're seeing a white background is because in my option, I have said not to show um, the transparency because I have it none. So I'm changing it to a small and I hit OK. And now you will notice that is a transparent background. So just for your convenience sake, I've switched it back on. And you notice this is the mask, and very nicely have I eliminated the back. The next step to this is that you create a brand new layer, and just click of convenience, click on the new layer. By default, the layer will form itself above the last layer that you were working on, or which was active. I'm simply going to drag it down, and I'm going to name it as my background because this is where I'm going to apply a nice clean gradient to create a new background. Um, simplest thing would be to use a subtle sort of a dark gray to a light gray and I've already got a little gradient which is let's say what it is. Uh, so I am at about 54, 54, 54 RGB and in blacks or my dark tones and in my whites I'm at 220 which is a bit of a gray. So I hit OK and when I come in here I take the gradient, make sure the correct layer and then you can click and drag. Now notice I'm going at angles. When we go at angles, the gradient will also fall at an angle. If you wish to constrain the angle at which the gradient goes, simply keep shift pressed and then when you click and drag, it'll be at 90 degrees, 45 degrees, whatever, at distinct angles. So you need to figure out where your gradient should be. I'm kind of thinking perhaps somewhere in here. Yes, that makes a little sense because it kind of creates a natural look and feel to the whole thing. This is making sense. In another video, I will show you how to create sh realistic looking shadow to this box. Hope this made some sense.